Hello, Captains. Welcome to the 8th anniversary of Star Trek Online. So as of right now, the 8th anniversary is live on Star Trek Online. That's right, 8 years of Star Trek Online. The game has survived. Many said it would not, and yet here it, is, here it stands. So because the 8th anniversary is currently online, that obviously is where you will want to go to get all the new stuff. I am just going to give this brief news update here after the anniversary has gone live. Uh, this is just going to quickly update us on um, the new things, just to remind us some of the new things that we can do. Uh, this also is going to give us the stats of the discovery box finally, and maybe talk about the featured episode a little bit. So first, let's read the official announcement. It says here, nothing is guaranteed when you're making a video game. I can remember, remember over eight long years ago when we were just about to release Star Trek Online to the world. We were proud of what we created and couldn't wait to show everyone. The team was curious how the game would be received. Would people like our take on this rich universe? Would people show up lot, uh, to live out their dreams of being a captain in Starfleet or the Klingon Defense Force? There were hushed hallway conversations, as if we were discussing the haunting of Deck Twelve, wondering if the game was successful. Wondering if the game was successful, how long of a run could it have? Many online games don't last more than a couple of years. Could we do better? Could we match the length of the longest Star Trek series at seven years? Like I said, in the video game industry, nothing is guaranteed, and risk is everywhere. But on the Star Trek Online team, risk is our business. I'm humbled to announce that Star Trek Online is now eight years old and has surpassed the longevity of any Star Trek series that has ever existed. We're now the longest last lasting touchstone for this 51 year franchise and still going as strong as ever. In a year where where in a year where you could enjoy Steppenwolf's magic carpet ride as you launch your own model Phoenix as well as dulcet tones of the Star Trek Online's team's artisanal audio April Fool's joke, I think you'd have to ask Cadet Tilly of the U.S. Discovery, USS Discovery how awesome 2017 has been. <laughs> so they are uh, putting uh, Star Trek Discovery in there. Uh, you see that? Yep, yep. This past year brought a brand new story arc to the forefront that was teased in 2016, but really took shape in 2017 with the introduction of a devious new foe in the Zenkethi. Heard of, heard of on several shows, but never seen, they provided an excellent opportunity for the art and design teams to stretch their legs and create an enemy group with a truly unique look and play style. The Alliance fought against the Zenkethi's surge of genocidal aggression across the Alpha Quadrant while getting assistance from a couple of classic allies along the way. We were, at, we were able to add the voice of talents of J.G. Herzl's General Martok and the incomparable LeVar Burton as Geordi LaForge. This all-out defensive struggle for the Alliance has gone back and forth all year and will finally come to an epic conclusion today with the release of our 8th anniversary episode. And let me see if I can get this pronunciation correct, please... Please don't kill me if I get this wrong. Skila and Charybdis. Did I do that right? Hopefully so. In addition to the amazing storyline, we added some fantastic features that help bring you even deeper into the universe of Star Trek Online. The, the Zenkethi were introduced with some fantastic cues, as well as a brand new battle zone with challenging new mechanics. We expanded the R&D system with new kits and module school to let you further customize your ground combat experience. Next up, we added competitive PvE gameplay through our War Games content, allowing players to compete against each other without having to directly engage in combat with their opponents. Along with that addition, we completed a total rebalance and revamp of our space and ground skills. The skills were made clearer, more straightforward, and endured every choice a captain chose to make was valuable. Later in the year, we added the Endeavor system, offering captains a new challenge to complete for a, war, a reward every other day. This system has served to strengthen the community and bring them together to experience content from across the game's lifetime, and showed new players of Stowe's corners of the game they may not have ever seen. 
In our final season of 2017, we added a brand new primary specialization in the Miracle Worker spec and our first five tier fleet holdings since the launch of the fleet system. 2017 was an absolutely fantastic year for Star Trek with the release of the amazing new show, Star Trek Discovery, and for Star Trek Online with amazing seasonal updates of story content and features. We're looking forward to push Star Trek Online to new heights in 2018 with new storylines and a major update that will have Morn talking the ear off of everyone that will listen. With over 160 episodes and 8 proven years of updates, there has never been a more exciting time to jump into Star Trek Online. Happy 8th anniversary and I cannot wait to see you in game. Steven Ricosa, executive producer, Star Trek Online. Well... That was a very well-made summary. Pretty much most of it was a summary of what happened last year and the previous year. Um, there were a lot of updates, of course, in 2017. The Zenkethi did take a, a center stage. Uh, I, I can't say the Zenkethi are the most interesting species or storyline that we've had in Star Trek Online. I still think the Iconian storyline is very powerful. And in fact, right now, I am replaying... A, a new character on the Romulan faction. I'm a Reman on the Romulan faction and I have aligned with the KDF. So that's a very interesting playthrough I've got going on. And I really, really like the Romulan storyline. They started it off really good. Uh, up, of course, until it combines with the KDF and Federation missions, that is. I wish there were some more unique Romulan missions, but even so, it is a good... Um, a good start there with the Romulan storyline. I love the storyline there. So there are some good storylines in this game. I can't say this in Kethi is the bestest I've ever had. And I'm not really sure how well the competitive war games, PV, PE, whatever's cues are still going. Um, I know sometimes a lot of those things die off. There are still people playing the Zenkethi Red Alert and um, the uh, Zenkethi Gauntlet. Although I know the numbers have gone down in that because I haven't seen as many people in uh, the Dranur Gauntlet and the others in Kathy One. Um, as for the the one that has to deal with the black hole gravity well or gravity or whatever it is, uh, I don't see a lot of people in that one anymore at all. People pretty much have given up on that one. And again, the competitive uh, PVEP stuff, whatever it is. Uh, I don't know how many people are still playing that either, to be honest. That is a whole queue that I really need to work on on my other characters. I'm just not sure if I can actually get into any queues. I'm not sure if any, there's a lot of people still playing that. Maybe there are. Maybe I don't know. I'm going to, you know, of course, assess that because I do need the competitive uh, queue or reputation, I should say, on many of my other characters. I have it all unlocked on one character only, so I really need to do it on all my other characters. But anyway, I digress. That was a good summary of 2017, and um, you can see where they're headed now with 2018. Several things here to take note of. Number one, Star Trek Discovery is being mentioned a lot. We are getting a Star Trek Discovery lockbox there are Star Trek Discovery ships in this game now, and there is, of course, the Star Trek Discovery uniform. So all of that is completely open to the game. This game is able to use all of the assets from Star Trek Discovery because it is owned by CBS. They hold the rights, and they can say yay or nay on things for Star Trek Online. They have said yay. So Star Trek Online will get Star Trek Discovery assets as the series continues. So if you've never seen the series, because it is on CBS All Access, if you've never seen the series, just note some of those things are going to be in the game. And you may not recognize them or know, or know what the heck they are or talking about if you've never seen the series. If you have seen the series and you've seen every single episode, then they should be familiar to you and you know what to expect with those things. Uh, just note that moving forward, it looks like we're going to see more stuff. As more stuff is shown on screen, on TV, that that allows Cryptic to have more content for the game, simply put. So whether you like the series or you don't like the series, doesn't really matter. Cryptic is going to put Star Trek Discovery stuff in this game. That's just the way it is. Um, now, 
moving on from that, we can see that there is mention of Morn. Morn will talk your ear off, he said they say here. So we know Morn is from DS9. And we know Morn never talked. He just sat at the bar and would just listen. He's probably the best character ever. Just sat there, drank, and listened. <laughs> but with the talk here of Morn, that gives me the idea that perhaps Cardassian, Bajoran, DS9 stuff is coming. I don't know in what capacity, but we are getting Bajoran weaponry or a uh, kit with the new featured episode. So they are definitely working toward more Deep Space Nine stuff this year. So that is probably what we can look forward to for release this year. Will it be just a whole bunch of content? Or will it be a new playable faction? There's rumor it may be a Cardassian faction. Uh, my, the only thing I can say to that is I hope they do a better job than they did with the other, quote, factions they put in the game after Starfleet and KDF. Um, for those that have been in the game since the beginning, you know Starfleet or the Federation has always had the best storyline, the best mission missions. KDF, it was okay, but it was missing a whole lot at first. And it took them years to finally get KDF sorted out. Years, okay? Then once they did that, we got the, what I call the half faction, which is the Romulan faction. And I say that because you cannot stay aligned with Romulans. You have to align with either Starfleet or KDF. And when you do that, most of the missions be, or all the missions become shared at that point. You play, basically you play unique to Romulan, Romulan missions, and then it spurs off into the shared missions with whatever uh, faction you've aligned with. So it's a bit of a half faction in that way because Starfleet and KDF have their own missions throughout the start to finish, but not, uh, not that one. So it's a bit, it's a bit different. And then with the original Star Trek series, quote faction, uh, I would hardly call that a faction at all. I would call that a mini faction because if you've played it, it's literally just a few missions and then you are up to the current time period and everything's all the same and nothing's different. You've got a different color UI, you've got a different beaming sound effect. I mean, that's really it. So um, they've kind of gone backwards with these factions. They were, are releasing them with less and less content. So therefore, if there is a rumored Cardassian faction or any kind of faction coming up this year or next year, I hope that it is a full faction and they have plenty of missions to play. That's really the key. The key is to have a lot of missions that are unique to that faction only, that only that faction can play. That is what makes a faction. That is what really makes it unique. You want to choose to play that faction for those missions, for that storyline, for whatever that faction can get that the others cannot get. That's why you want to do that. So if there's another faction coming, I hope it's a full-fledged one. If it's not, then it might not be taken very well. That's just what I'm saying. But I don't know that that's what's coming for all I know, it's just some featured episode series and some ships and whatever. I don't know. I got no idea, but it sounds like we're moving toward DS9 stuff. So that could be interesting. Um, I'm not sure if that is the best move. I am. I mean, I love Cardassians and Bajoran stuff and DS9. Um, but honestly, I never really found the Cardassians that interesting. They're, they're, they're pretty typical you know, pretty typical species. I've really, you know, just kind of never fell in love with them or anything. The Bajorans are a little more interesting, I think, than the Cardassians, but I don't know. I don't know where, I don't know where else they can go with that storyline. They've already got a pretty good Cardassian storyline in the game and the true way, and they've already got all that pretty much fleshed out in the game, so I'm not really sure where they could go with any more DS9 stuff. Hmm. I'm interested in, to find out, though. Um... We did have a Mirror Universe push 
uh, earlier. I can't. I don't think it was last year, maybe the year before, but we had this big Mirror Universe update, and they did a lot with that. I think I think that should have or would have been the time for the DS9 stuff, but maybe not. Maybe those two are d definitely separate things. Um, I don't know. I don't know where it's headed, but it sounds like that's where it's going. What else do we have to talk about? Um, new storylines for 2018 are coming, so that's good. And it does say a major update, so we'll see what that's all about. Anyway, I'm rambling. Let's move on. All right, here we go. The uh, week one rewards for the featured episode, Skeela and Charybdis. Now, I am looking forward to playing this mission. I have not yet played it as of this video, but I will be doing that, and the video for that should be up this weekend. But here we go. Let's read just a little bit about this. Each week we'll roll out new reward for the featured episode Skeela and Charybdis. The first completion of this mission on an account this week will grant a featured episode weekly reward box. This box gives your choice of an enhanced universal tech upgrade or a captain specialization point box, which gives the character op who opens it a specialization point. The weekly reward box, tech upgrade, and specialization point box are all bound to account and may be freely traded between your characters. A specialization box requires you to be level 60. The collective resistance to the Zenkethi's genocidal rampage has come to a head. Romulan engineers have developed the Bajor Defense the Covariant Shield Array. Interesting that Romulan engineers have developed the Bajor Defense Covariant Shield Array. So that's interesting. Uh, I wonder how that works. When a shield facing is depleted, an ejection of plasma is shed from the shield array in the direction of the downed shield, damaging any foes nearby. The Bajor Defense Covariant Shield Array is part of the Bajor Defense Set. The Bajor Defense Warp Core is also part of this set, which is obtained alongside the Denorius Class Bajoran Interceptor, which is part of the 8th Anniversary Event. Collect additional pieces from this set to unlock powerful set bonuses. So we've got core damage system, two pieces, two piece bonus increases phaser, disruptor, and plasma damage. Three piece, stay tuned for next week's blog for the reveal. Four piece, stay tuned for next week's blog. So there you go. Um, so the co a covariant shield. So what we know from this is covariant is one of the more powerful shields in terms of shield capacity. Um, and when a shield facing is depleted it ejects plasma so like a shield plasma ejection when a f shield facing is taken out in the direction of the down shield so in the direction of the uh, shield array face facing that's down plasma will eject from that so i guess i wonder if anything that buffs plasma damage would buff that you're already going to be buffing for phaser damage, but do we also need to buff for plasma damage too to get the best from that shield? I wonder. Interesting idea. I don't know how effective that is in combat, though, to be honest. Also, you have to think that the enemy could probably move away from this gaseous thing coming at them, right? They see a gaseous cloud of plasma coming at them from your ship. Well, they can just hit impulse and move out of the way. So I wonder how accurate this thing is going to be. Will it really hit their ships or will their ships move out of range or out of the way real quick? If that's the case, then it would not be very useful. So I wonder how it ejects and how it will work. But I guess we will find out when I play this mission. Okay, what else do we have? We've got the stats of the Discovery Lockbox. Now, this is very long here. I'm not going to read this entire thing because... My gosh, that would take forever, and uh, I'm not going to do that. But you can come here yourself to the Star Trek Online webpage and read this whole thing. I'm just going to summarize this. I'm going to quickly skim through this right now, and we're going to just look at the uh, the big notes here on this. Um, relive the adventures of the latest canon starships from Discovery. The following starships will be av available with the Discovery lockbox. For the first time, we are allowing Romulan captains the opportunity to captain starships designed for their allied factions. Thus, a Federation-allied Romulan will be capable of commissioning the Walker-class and Crossfield-class starships, while Klingon-allied Romulans may find themselves at the helm of the intimidating sarcophagus vessel. 
When a player wins the grand prize from the lockbox, they will automatically be rewarded with the ship appropriate to their faction choice. The console and starship trait from the opposing faction ship will be made available as a prize option within the lockbox as well. While the Walker class may only be purchased on the low buy store by Federation captains and those allied with the Federation, KDF and KDF allied captains will be able to purchase a package containing its console and starship trait for a reduced price. So here's the Crossfield class science Vanguard tier six. We of course know this as the discovery. While the Crossfield class was originally created to be a vessel that specialized in scientific endeavors, these starships were heavily modified in an effort to aid in the war efforts that erupted between the Federation and Klingons after the Battle of Binary Stars. We read that previously. This starship comes with a Lieutenant Universal Temporal Operative Specialist Seat. So it's got Temporal Operative Specialist Seat. Interesting. And a Lieutenant Commander Universal Intelligence. So it's got Intelligence Seating and Temporal Operative Seating. That's an interesting combination. So, um, need to be level 40 to fly this. Looks like the hull strength is 52,000 at level 60. Um, shield modifier is 1.25. Four forward weapons, three aft. One Lieutenant Commander Tactical, one Ensign Engineering, one Commander Science, one Lieutenant Universal slash Temporal Operative, one Lieutenant Commander slash Universal slash Intelligence. So it's a Commander Bridge Officer seating, for, or Commander Science Bridge Officer seating. So this is, does lean more toward a, being a science ship. It has four tactical, two engineering, and five science, though. So it's more of a heavy science slash medium tactical ship, I guess you could say. Heavy science, medium tactical. Does that make sense? It's like leans mostly heavy on the science, but then it has a uh, tactical come right after that because it's only got two engineering slots, console modifications. So it's like science first, then tactical, then engineering. Base turn rate, 10 degrees per second, so probably a slow moving ship, I'm not sure. Plus 10 auxiliary power, can load dual cannons. Don't know why you would want to on a slow moving ship. Sensor analysis, subsystem targeting, and secondary deflector. So yeah, this is definitely um, heavy on the science first. Console universal mycelium ambush, and then the starship ability package for a science vessel. So it's a science vessel, but then it leans toward tactical it's like a science tactical ship that actually sounds kind of appealing um so i would actually like to try that ship out um we've talked about the mycelium ambush i'm not going to read it here go read that or read that watch that in the previous video uh, where i read about that also the black alert starship trait i'm not going to do that here here's here's the walker class light exploration cruiser um, this is the other ship, uh, tier six, still at level 40. It's 53,000 at level 60. So does that have a higher hull strength? Yeah, it has 1000 higher hull strength. So this ship here, the Walker class light exploration cruiser, I guess, cause it's a cruiser, uh, has 1000 more, um, sh um, hull strength on it. But it has less shield modifier, 1.15 versus 1.25. Also, it has five forward weapon slots and three aft. So one Lieutenant Commander Tactical, one Ensign Engineering Intelligence, one Commander Engineering, one Lieutenant Commander Science, and one Lieutenant Universal slash Pilot. So it's got a pilot and an intelligence seating on it. And it's commander engineering so this is going to lean really heavy on the engineering i guess it's because it's a cruiser and and then it's kind of split between tactical and science you've got three tactical and three science console slots but five engineering so it's really split it's interesting because it has a pilot seating on it and an intelligence seating In interesting combination base turn is 10 degrees per second no cannons on this one. It's got the obfuscation screen. It's got the cruiser command array abilities. It's got the cruiser starship mastery package on it as well. And again, we won't go through all that. Then the uh, the Vulcan Hello. I'm not going to go through all that. Sarcophagus Dreadnought. So here's the Klingon ship. 
Again, ooh, this one has a 67,000 hull at level 60, so a lot higher, but only a 1.05 shield modifier. Um, need to be level 40. Four weapons, three aft. One commander tactical. So this is a tactically inclined ship. One lieutenant commander engineering. One lieutenant science. One ensign universal miracle worker. One lieutenant commander universal slash command. So it's got command and miracle worker on it. Four tactical, four engineering, three science. So this is like a tactical engineering ship. This is like heavy on tactical with engineering right up underneath that. So like tactical engineering and then science. That's an interesting combination. Um, plus 10 to aux power. This one can load dual cannons, but... I'm going to say it moves real slow. Four degrees per second turn rate. Yeah, why would you put cannons on a ship like that? That doesn't make sense. Subsystem targeting. Interesting that it has subsystem targeting. That's what science ships usually have. And it is equipped with a cloaking device. Makes sense. You've got a multi-target tractor arrays. You've got two hangar bays. So this is a hangar bay ship. Okay, two hangar bays here. And you've got the tactical carrier. Oh, it's a carrier. That's why. That makes sense. Okay, yeah, well, it says carrier in the title. Duh. It's a carrier. Oh, okay. Interesting. Okay, and then we have the Mokai Raiders. The sarcophagus dreadnought carrier comes standard with two hangar bays of Mokai Raiders. These fighter-sized craft are armed with disruptor beams. They are built exclusively to harry foes and, and not intended to survive conflicts. Instead... Their glorious deaths, glorious deaths in battle grant temporary hit points to the carrier that launches them. And, they and their relaunch times are far faster than other fighters. Their warp cores are also rigged to deal additional damage in the case of the destruction of their vessels. These vessels are so dedicated to their cause that they are incapable of benefiting from any and all sources of hull restoration. So these are ships that are meant to die. That's a new concept. Uh, these start these fighters are meant to blow up they're meant to go out there and just blow and blow up which provides temporary hit points that's weird it's an interesting concept but i guess you can't heal them or do anything with them they're not fighters they're just out they are fighters but they're not fighters these can only be obtained if the player owns the sarcophagus dreadnought carrier but but can then be used on any klingon ship that has a hangar bay Note, despite using the term raider, these fighters, these fighters, not frigates, okay? They have one four disruptor beam, one four disruptor dual beam bank, one aft disruptor beam array. Powers fly her apart, self damage buff as expensive damage over time, purposely destabilize warp core, warp core breach deals additional damage, and provides shield materials on death, grants owner temporary hit points. So those are the stats of the Discovery ships. And I'm going to tell you, I'm interested in all of them. I mean, I would love to have each and every one of them. Uh, because I will definitely t test them out and fly them and try them. Um, obviously, they are expensive to get uh, for right now. You know, some are on the low buy store. Some you get just by chance with a lockbox. And if you don't get it, you have to go pay billions of energy credits in the uh, exchange to try to buy one. So, yeah, probably will be a while before I can get one of these. But if I ever do get one of these, I will do a review on it, of course. And uh, they, they, are, they do sound interesting. I've got to tell you, I'm interested in the science one. Well, actually, I'm interested in both of them. What am I saying? I, like, I kind of like both of them. The Cruiser and the, uh, the um, Crossfield class. I like both of them. The Sarcophagus, I'm not entirely enthused about although because i'm not really a carrier player i don't play ships that are like huge carriers it's just not my play style but i would review it if i had one well anyway those are the new things for the eighth anniversary of star trek online it's out now you can go in game you can play it you can enjoy it Next up, I'm going to have a video, an introduction video about the 8th year anniversary. I'm going to go in-game, and we're going to go play the Omega minigame, the Party Patrol, get our party, party popper, 
uh, going to get uh, do all the things that we can do to get our to get to uh, start getting our vouchers, which will be playing in the featured episode series number one, and everything else that we can do for this uh, eighth year anniversary. So expect a couple more videos on that. I'll have the intro video and then uh, also have a uh, let's play of the new featured episode, Skeela and Charybdis. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned for the next one.